every single week we try new recipes. Mm -hmm. What is the downfall of that? Because we never get to have the recipes that we really enjoy again. Right, because we're always looking for new recipes. It's the nature of what we do, and we love it. Yeah. So this week we decided, you know what? We're just going to make some of our favorites over yes. again. Yes. We're going to share them here with you. Three different recipes that we really love and we just wanted to make again. So y'all come along for the ride. Hey y'all, I'm Mandy and this is Mandy in the Making. What's one of your favorites? Marvette's chicken. Her French onion chicken. French onion chicken. Y'all, her recipe is amazing. Yes. We've made it multiple times and there's a reason for that. I would make it, it would be in my rotation every single month if I didn't do what I do. It's that good and it is so easy, so let's do it. I believe the first time I made this, I made it in a cast iron skillet because that's all I had that would go from the stovetop to the oven. But now I have my caraway pans and they do that. So I'm gonna be using this large skillet. We're gonna preheat the oven to 400. We're also gonna heat up this skillet to about medium high and let that start getting warm. And let's go salt and pepper our chicken. I've got six chicken thighs here. You do wanna do this with chicken thighs. You can do chicken breasts, but beware, they could dry out. So I'm doing six of these. It's just me and Steven here tonight. We'll probably have one or two left over. But I've salt and peppered one side. This is nice and hot. Let's add some oil. I put them salt and pepper side down. They are starting to do their thing. We're gonna let them brown up on one side before we flip them, but I do need to add some more salt and pepper to the other side. While we are waiting on that first side to brown, I've got some onion here. We're gonna chop this in the chopper. Okay, it has started to brown on the first side. So let's go in and flip it. And let's throw in our diced onion or chopped onion. And we're just gonna let this brown on the other side. We don't have to worry about it cooking all the way through quite yet because it is going in the oven. So it is time to add in a can of French onion soup. You can also do French onion like the dry mix and just add a can of water or a cup of water in with it. But I'm just doing the French onion soup so I don't have to do that. And then you need a 28 ounce can of green beans that have been drained. You could use, I've used the French before. I'm not sure if I've done the Italian before but we love the Italian green beans. So that's what I'm gonna add in now. And then this is gonna go in a 400 degree oven for about 20 minutes, just until our chicken is cooked through. Y'all know what else we haven't done in a while and some of y'all have asked for it. And that is commentator. So if you're new here, he is the commentator, but what he does is he comes in and he reads some comments from y'all. He hasn't seen these comments. I just picked out a couple and he's gonna read these. Here's All the right. first one. Here we go. You can tell you're from the South, weren't. I love it. These recipes look amazing. Yeah, Who's rent. that from? That's from Tina Law. Okay, Tina. Yes, rent. That is a word in the South. Rent. It means ruined. It's rent. It's rent. And she spelled it correctly, too. She did. R-U-R-N-T. It's rent. How do y'all, do y'all say ruined? Or do you say rent? Rent. Where, where are you from? It has been 20 minutes. Let's take it out of the oven and we're gonna add our finishing touch. This is our finishing touch. Now this is gonna go back in the oven for another 10 minutes or so just to crisp those up really well. Dinner brought to you by Marvette. Marvette, so in case you're new here, we haven't done Subby Supper in a while, but Marvette is a subscriber and she sent us this recipe several years ago and we this is probably our third yeah. or fourth time making it. Brought me a knife, but I just cut that on my floor. Well, good, I'm glad. I mean, y'all. Mm, I love the flavors in this. I know. It's so juicy. Yes. And the, the, the juices, the sauce, it just has this real, it's the chicken mm -hmm. and the onion flavor combined. It's just really, really delicious. I mean, the it's fact incredible. that it only has like four ingredients or something, I mean, it's just... It's so balanced. It's just delicious. It really is. Delicious. So I'm so excited. This is delicious. We've got cornbread left over from a recipe that I made a couple of nights ago to share with another family, but we got to eat some too, and it's another favorite. So let me show you that recipe. Okay, you know, this, I don't know that this was ever in a best of, but it's one that I make over and over and over again, especially for a large crowd because it makes so much. So I thought I'd share it with you. I am making a Southwest Tex-Mex chili. I will leave the recipe linked below, as always, it's on my website. But I've made it for small group. I have made it for several different occasions. 
today I'm making it and I'm going to keep half of it for Stephen and I to eat tonight. And the other half is going to a family in our church who just had a baby. So right now I just have a pound of ground beef and a pound of ground chorizo along with one onion that I've diced. And I'm just gonna brown all of this up and then everything else will go into the crock pot along with this. It is so simple and it makes so much. So if you're feeding a crowd, this is a great one. So this is the rest of the ingredients that's going in. This is some taco seasoning. I'm actually going to be adding that to my meat here in just a second, but it's very, very simple. So I just drained as much grease off of this as I could. Now we're going to add in about three tablespoons of the taco seasoning and just mix that all together. I'm going to turn the heat off because we're pretty much done at this point and we're gonna head over to the crock pot. So I've got the meat here in the bottom. You need about 28 ounces of pinto beans in their juices. So I'm gonna use two of these packs from Thrive Market. You need one can of black beans drained and rinsed, so I'm gonna do that now. We need one can of chili beans in their liquid, so I don't need to drain these. So much flavor in the chili beans liquid. One thing I forgot to show y'all, frozen corn. It says an 18 ounce bag. I don't usually do that much. I do about half of one of those bags. That's just personal preference. We need either a 28 ounce can or two cans of diced tomatoes. I'm using one fire roasted and one regular. We also need a can of Rotel. I did drain my Rotel. You need one can of beef broth, so I'm just gonna eyeball this. We need a can of red enchilada sauce. And lastly, just a couple of tablespoons of brown sugar. That's it. Let's stir this all together. And then I'm also gonna make a pan of cornbread and I will take them half of that. It's just the husband and the wife really that are gonna be eating this. They have one other child, but he's two. So I don't think he's gonna eat this. And they've had this before. They're in our small group and I know they love it. So I knew that was a very easy choice to be able to take them today. I'm gonna put this on low for five to six hours and it'll be ready. This looks amazing though. It does look good loaded with spices and all kinds of flavors that mm -hmm. I know it's got chorizo in there so yeah he was super excited this morning when I was cooking the chorizo yeah definitely got the chorizo yeah oh man yeah lots of flavor that chorizo adds in there oh yeah so compare it to taco soup mmm there is no comparison. Mm. Okay. It's much better than that. Really? Oh yeah. And we love that taco soup recipe. The tortilla chips was a nice touch. Okay, good. Sour cream. Really good. Well, I'm excited. Yeah, you're gonna like it. These are from Aldi. These are sparkling water, cherry lime. I always get a question or two about what, what it is we're drinking. <laughs> mm. All right, I'm gonna give it a try. Cole, are you enjoying it? All right. He, oh, oh, he's very much enjoying it. I almost forgot to come back on here and tell y'all what I thought. This is so good. Ma'am. <laughs> You're very vocal. We did not add any cheese. I know, it's a shame. This is so much better than taco soup. It has so much more flavor. We really love this. So thank you, Rose, for submitting this. He's on bowl number two. <laughs> okay, one more commentator comment. All right, this one's from Sally. It looks like it, yep. Sally. It says, always have partial boxes of pasta. Mm -hmm. Combine to use, why not? Mm -hmm. Same with spaghetti and fettuccine. So she's referring to the last time I made some pasta, I had some rotini and some, I can't remember, rigatoni maybe. I have partial boxes of pasta all the time. So... You never know. Sometimes you'll come over here for a pasta dish and it'll have bow tie pasta along with elbow macaroni. If I just have a half a box and I need a whole box and I've got two halves, right? that makes me think of something. <laughs> yeah. Then I just combine them. But anyway. Well, tell them what it think, makes you think. No, of. you tell them because it's your thing. You know, I'm goofy about 98% of the time. And uh, a lot of times I'll say, well... <clears throat> Like if somebody's uh, birthday, you know, like someone who's going to be turning uh, <clears throat> another age, another age soon, mm -hmm. I would say that she's going to be 42 and two halves. <laughs> For those of you who don't understand what he just said, he said two halves. 
They said. They can figure that out. They can figure say, it out. How'd you say it? 42 and two haves. 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 <laughs> There's another southern word for you. Have. <laughs> I am going to be 42 and two haves. Half. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We got to get back to cooking. Another dish that I love and I think about all the time, but I just don't make it. I've made it maybe once or twice since I first tried it on camera a couple of years ago. It's garlic butter chicken bites. Dinner comes together in like 15 minutes and it is so good. It is so good. So we're making it tonight. I've got some frozen broccoli in here. I'm gonna turn that on in just a minute. But let's go ahead and heat up this skillet to about medium high. Let that warm up and let's prep the chicken. I've got two very large chicken breasts cut into about one, one and a half inch chunk. So the first thing we need to do is just pat these dry, even though they're pretty dry. I mean, look at that. But you just wanna make sure that your chicken is dry. As in true Mandy form, I chose a cutting board that's way too small. But we're gonna make it work because I'm not gonna dirty up another cutting board. I've got some flour here. We're gonna sprinkle a couple of tablespoons onto our chicken and just kind of toss it around. Start with just a little bit. Okay, those are all good and coated in a little bit of flour. Now let's add some more seasoning. I've got some Italian herb seasoning. We're gonna go in with some salt and pepper. For color, we like to add paprika. I'm adding just a little more seasoning. After I tossed it, I felt like I needed just a little bit more. So I'm going back in. That's all we gotta do. Let's head over to our skillet. Okay, I've got a tablespoon-ish of butter. And then we're also gonna put some olive oil in here. My pan is already hot. We're gonna go in with our chicken. We're gonna make sure that we don't crowd the pan. You don't wanna steam your chicken. You're wanting to kind of brown your chicken and cook it where it has enough room in the pan. So I may have to do a couple of batches. So Steven just came in and flipped these for me. Y'all, they already smell so good. This is so simple. Here in just a second, we'll remove these and then we will put in the second batch. So Steven added in the first batch back in there. We're adding another tablespoon of butter and then we're gonna throw some garlic in there. You can do even more than that. More garlic, she says. <laughs> there you go. And we went and grabbed a few sprigs of thyme from our garden. We're just gonna throw that in there. Recipe doesn't call for it, but just sounds good. It's gonna season that butter really well. And then here in just a second, once the butter completely melts, he's just gonna toss all of this together so everything gets good and coated. I said, you can toss it all together. I thought he was gonna grab the spatula. No. That's not how he tosses things. Just wanna get it all coated in that good garlic butter. And then they're pretty much done. We're just gonna wait a couple of minutes and we're ready to eat. We eating on the porch because yeah. it's like 75 degrees out here. Feels good. In August, that never happens. Mm -hmm. All right, you ready? I'm ready. Do it to it. All right, here we go. Oh man, mm. I love the flavors of that spice that's a, that you put on yeah. there, that Italian spice. Yeah. Incredible. Now you get some of the, kind of the butter, buttery, mm -hmm. garlicky yeah. flavor. I love how the seasonings are crusted on here. Yes. I'm guessing the flour really helps mm. do that, but it creates such a great little crust. It's just melting your mouth. Look at that, y'all. Mm -hmm. All right, I'm gonna dig in, I'll be right back. You know, it seems like the best dinners have the simplest ingredients. Mm -hmm. That is just so good. It's such a simple and classic way to do chicken, but just a little bit different. I don't know, we love it. It reminds me of Chick-fil-A's grilled chicken nuggets. Ooh. It really does. It reminds me of that. This, I like these better though. Yeah, me too. But these. Well, probably because they got butter all over them. Well, that and just the seasonings are just nice and caramelized on there. Yeah. Yeah, the flavor, there's like layers of flavor. It's really good. So you need to tell me below, which of these three have you tried? And which of these three do you think would be your favorite? Out of the three that we had this week, which one was your favorite? I think I'm gonna put Marvet's chicken on top. All right. And then the chicken bites. Okay. And then the chili. I think I'm gonna put Marvettes on top, then the Southwest chili, and then this. But in saying that, all three of these are favorites of ours. You're not gonna go wrong with making any of them. Thank y'all so much for watching. We appreciate you being here week in and week out. If you haven't already, go ahead and hit that subscribe button before you leave, and we will see you next time. Bye, y'all.